The evolution of insects is a story that scientists are still piecing together. But as the field of genetics becomes ever more advanced, the image grows clearer. Now our focus has shifted to a small, soil-dwelling invertebrate the size of a pencil tip. Could this inconspicuous hexapod hold the key to insect origins? What ancient wisdoms are hidden in their tiny bodies? And did they help Egypt build the pyramids? Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Today, we are talking about the class Protura, sometimes called the Coneheads, but honestly better known as just the Proturans. This is the first I would move her, but she just looks too comfy. This is the first of a three-part series covering the Entignatha, three groups that were once considered insects but have since been separated. One of the biggest differences being that they have internal mouth parts, while the insects have external mouth parts. The three groups are the Proturans, the Diplurans, and the Colemblans. But the Entignatha are grouped with the insects in the subphylum Hexapoda, as we still acknowledge that they're pretty closely related. I'm afraid it gets a little more complicated from here. You see, the group we know as the Entignatha may not even exist. Recent evidence supports that while Hexapoda is monophyletic, meaning a true group derived from a unique common ancestor, the Entignatha are paraphyletic, meaning they can't all be grouped up into a neat little pile. Their evolutionary history is mixed in with the insects. And this is why we're covering the Protura first, because a recent study in 2024 by Du et al. provides pretty robust support for the Protura sister hypothesis, where Protura is the sister group to the rest of the Hexapoda, and Calembola and Diplura are the sister to the Insecta. Now, I want to be clear that this is still an ongoing discussion. In fact, just six months ago, a critique of the Duet All study was published in the same journal. They point out some inaccuracies in Duet All and instead provide support for the previously established Elipura hypothesis, stating that Protura and Calembola are sister to one another, with the Diplura being sister to the Insecta. So things are complicated. Regardless, this would make Protura either the earliest or one of the earliest diverging hexapod lineages, so they're kind of a big deal. Despite this notable title, the Proturans are not very well researched, but there is still plenty we do know. There are around 750 to 800 or so described species of Protura, and they can be found worldwide, from the Amazon rainforest to the northern regions of Siberia. However, as a rule of thumb, they tend to like moisture, so good luck finding one out in the Sahara. And frankly, good luck finding one at all. Despite this far-reaching geographic presence, they can be tough to locate. I remember back in my undergrad, we went through soil sample after soil sample, through Burley's funnel after Burley's funnel, to no avail. Or we found, like, one. I can't quite remember. We might have been looking in the wrong places, though, because in some areas you can find tens of thousands in one square meter. But what doesn't help the search is that they're hidden away in the soil and about the size of a grain of dirt. If you're lucky and find an absolute chonker, it might be two millimeters. But if you do locate one, let's make sure you can actually identify it. The proturin body is somewhat elongate with a cone-shaped head. Hence the common name, cone heads. We're breaking some new ground here. But in terms of unique characteristics, Proturans are better described by what they lack rather than what they have. For one, they mostly lack pigmentation, so the majority of individuals are going to be whitish or pale yellow. They also lack eyes. They do have simple structures that resemble eyes called pseudoculi, but we don't really know what these do. Maybe chemoreception? I'm not sure. And they lack antennae something all other hexapods have. Instead of antennae, their main sensory organ is their front legs, which they hold out in front of them to feel around their environment. As we mentioned, they also lack external mouth parts, so the head looks a little bare. But it doesn't stop at the head. Like the other Entignathans, Proturans lack wings, 
which I'm sure they're not too upset about given their subterranean lifestyle. And they also lack Circe, a pair of appendages found on the abdomens of all hexapods except the Columbula and the Protera. And this is seemingly where their name comes from. Proto means first or primitive, and Ura means tail. So Protera roughly means primitive tailed, referencing that lack of Circe. After going over all these insectoid traits that the Protera seemingly never evolved, it makes sense that they're one of the earliest divergences in Hexapoda. Speaking of which, the Protera lack metamorphosis. Kind of. They lack a complete metamorphosis, like you'll find in the holometabolist groups, and they don't really have a lot of big changes like in some of the hemimetabolist groups. Rather, their development is better described as anamorphosis. If you've watched my millipede video, you've heard this term before. Anamorphosis is where body segments are added with subsequent molts. So while the freshly hatched proturans have nine abdominal segments, the mature adults have a total of 12. But let's take it one step back, because like much of life on Earth, it all starts with an egg. From the limited data we have, proturin eggs take around a month or two to hatch. The freshly hatched proturins are called prelarvae, as they can't yet eat or walk quite right. They kind of just rest up as they finish developing. Once they molt, the immature proturins will scramble around the soil, feeding on fungal hyphae and sometimes decaying plant matter. Proturins don't chew. They pierce and suck up liquids. They mostly hang out in the upper layer of soil, though they have been found almost a foot deep. They may even practice a little bit of migration to lower levels when things get too cold for comfort. On occasion, they've even been found in rotting wood, which makes sense as this is another fungal hotspot. Eventually, the proturns will molt into their adult stage and seek out a mate. Or mates. We're not really sure how it works. They do seem to aggregate together, and they may employ aggregation pheromones for this purpose. It also seems the sex ratio is skewed in favor of females, so presumably males could mate with multiple females to maximize egg production for a population. Or females might be able to reproduce asexually through parthenogenesis, the creation of unfertilized yet viable eggs. We don't really have those details worked out, in case anyone is bored and wants to go on a side quest. But regardless, the cycle continues. Considering many of you probably have never even heard of proturins, it should come as no surprise that they don't really cause any issues for society. In fact, their role in decomposition and nutrient cycling can be of great benefit to the soils in which they're found, though it's kind of hard to quantify their impact. But what we do know is that these early diverging hexapods are a critical part of piecing together the evolutionary history of insects. So hopefully with the continuing controversy surrounding the Protura sister hypothesis, we'll see some more research dedicated to understanding this puzzling group. In the meantime, remember to preserve your leaf litter and woody debris so these little guys have something to munch on. Anyways, thank you all for listening. And if you like the content, please remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date with future videos. And if you have any fun facts I missed about the Protura, or for some reason have a favorite Proturan species, please leave them in the comments below. I always love hearing about them. Peace, y'all.